She who sees far, cutting edge workshops for women that are outside the traditional business thought, using my seven keys to kicking butt leadership for women signature system. Hi, I'm Lorelai Kraft, and let me show you what can happen when you don't take no for an answer, which is one of the seven keys. And I'm going to give you some examples of how my life changed because I didn't take no for an answer. My first business actually came about because of a hobby that I had. I had uh, I was living in Green Bay, Wisconsin with my husband and two small children and making Christmas ornaments and they were really pretty. My brother got married and I thought, why can't I put all this really pretty stuff on a candle? Because I had always loved candles, and I and those were the days before Unity candles became popular. So I did. I found a beautiful verse, and I put it on the candle in the name of the bride and groom, and you know, prettied it all up with jewels and pearls and everything. Took it to the wedding, and everybody loved it. So the next time we got invited to a wedding, I made one as a present, and everybody loved it again. So after that, when I got home, I started selling to neighbors, and then I started selling to little stores in Green Bay, and pretty soon I was getting very tired because I had a full-time job for the city of Green Bay. I had these two little children at home. I had a husband who was gone all the time. He was home every third weekend for a day and a half, and I was making candles in the basement. Um, running up and down the stairs, pouring wax, you know, in between taking kids to sitters and going to my job. And I got to the point where I thought, you know what, I either have to give this up or I have to turn it into a real business. And then I can say to my husband, quit your job and come home. We've got a real business. So I decided that uh, I would go to Milwaukee, which was the biggest city in Wisconsin. And I uh, put together, I had business cards made. I put together a little carry case of display candles and uh, took the yellow pages for religious stores out of the phone book. And I hit the road. The reason I, I went to the religious goods stores is because that's what I was selling to in Green Bay. So I figured that was my best market down in Milwaukee. So anyhow, I go and I've got these high hopes and I go to the first store on the yellow pages under religious goods and the person said, nah, we've never seen anything like this before. So I went to the second store and the second store said, well, nobody's ever asked for anything like this. I went to the third store on the list and that person just said, no, we're not interested went to the fourth store on the list and the clerk took my card back to the manager and I heard him say, what does she do? Make them in her basement? Tell her I'm busy. Well, you know what? I was making them in my basement and I went out to the car and I didn't just cry. I bawled. I sobbed. My dream was gone. My bubble had burst and I thought, oh no, you know, uh, but I just couldn't give up, so I dried my tears and I went to the next one on the list. That man loved the candles, and he gave me his business cards to take to other religious stores in Milwaukee and to tell them Dan Stemper loves these candles. Now, I found out later that Dan Stemper was the national president of the Religious Goods Association of America. And with his, you know, blessing, I went on, we actually went on to sell to 6,000 stores. So what I want to say to you, what if I had quit one store too soon? I would never have had the business that I had going forward if I had done that. J.K. Rowling, who wrote the Harry Potter books, was turned down by 12 publishers before one finally took her book. 
Here's another example of not taking no for an answer. Um, when I moved to Minnesota, I ended up building an 18,000 square foot factory. And I uh, had a, a two-story gift store attached to the factory. It was all candles. It was, it was glorious. But we were going into the recession in the beginning of 2001, 2002, 2003. And... Um, our business was going down because many of the stores we sold to were going out of business. So what I did was I came up with this idea of adding a cafe onto the candle factory because um, those were the days when you couldn't get Starbucks anywhere except at a Starbucks store. They didn't have it in the grocery stores, etc., like nowadays, and you can make it at home. So I thought I'm going to do and have Starbucks in my little cafe because people driving up from Minneapolis 200 miles they're going to be ready for this Starbucks fix and the people coming in from Fargo North Dakota it's a hundred miles they're going to be ready for their Starbucks fix so what I did was I, I um, converted offices downstairs in the factory into a little cafe and then I, I sent an, an email to Starbucks and I said, look, I live in this little tiny town, can't afford a franchise, but I really, really, really want to sell your coffee. Got a nice email back and the person said, oh, I'm sorry, we just don't do that. So I sent somebody else at Starbucks an email and got the same thing back. Oh, I'm sorry, we just don't do that. So I called somebody at Starbucks and that person was really nice. You know, I explained the whole thing, but that person also said, no, I'm, I'm sorry. We only do franchises. So I called somebody else at Starbucks and that person was really nice. And he listened to my story and he said, I think we can help you. And we ended up selling Starbucks at our little cafe. We got the napkins, the cups, I mean, all the signage, everything that we were selling Starbucks coffee. So what if I had quit after the first email that said no, or even the second, or even the first phone call? So I'm encouraging you when, when you get no for an answer, keep going, because if you're supposed to be doing this, the universe will find a way to do it.